Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to go through resin printing. Um, I'm going to be using Hallet Box, which is Creality's free uh, resin slicer, and a Hallet Marge uh, to do the um, printing, and a O2 wash station, wash and cure station, uh, that from Creality as well. So uh, come and join in the process. I'll show you how it's all done and um, what to expect when you do resin printing. Okay guys, just a quick one before we start. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Now just hit that little button down below. It doesn't take you five seconds and it helps me out. Hopefully help the channel um, continue on and me to be able to provide this sort of work for you. Plus it um, lets you know every time I put a new video up. So um, please subscribe. It costs you one little push <laughs> and it does help me a lot. Okay guys, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the Hallet Box start screen. Hallet Box is the Creality resin slicer. Over on this side here, you can see it's where your printer is. So you can choose what printer you have, or you can add one in if you want to add one in. Uh, fairly straightforward. These are the configs. So um, if you double click on one, it'll you can tell it how thick you want your layers, how quick you want it moving, how long you want your exposure times, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so I pretty much use the default, default so I don't need to change much in that. Okay, so you'll see that if I go to Hallet Marge, it's only got the default, but when I go to the Pro, it's got the default and Dynalix. So Dynalix is a speed operation, I believe. I use Dynalix all the time, or Dynax, sorry, all the time. But anyway, first thing you want to do is drag in a model. So I've just got a model here that I need to print. Uh, it's telling me it's too large, but I'm just going to ignore that and try and make it fit. So basically when it's red it is too large now I'm moving it around like this with my right mouse button just keep the right, right mouse button depressed and you can move it around and uh, see different views if you hold the wheel button down so the center button you can actually move the whole um, display around okay so what I want to do is try and fit it on that plate so I'm going to move him oh, I'll go over here to the side here. The second one down is the move. This top one is go and have a look for models and stuff, but the main ones you're going to use are the move, the rotation tool, the resize tool, and the clone tool. And the auto layout will automatically try and place the model on the display for you. Now, I don't want to do that because it's already said it can't find it. Okay, so anyway, let's go to the move. I'll drag him on and see how he's turning purple. And he's turning purple meaning he's on the he's on the bed. Is it? So if I go too far the other way, you can see how he's turning red on this other side now. So it's not going to fit if I put him that way. But what happens if I turn him lengthways? So I'm going to go to the rotate tool. I'm going to go click on him, and you can see you've got all these different circles around him with little arrow boxes on the side. You can see just by moving in different views you can see which ways they turn so I want to turn it this way so I get back up the top here and I'm going to turn it that way and I'm just basically going over the um, the little arrows here until they turn yellow and when they turn yellow it means I've got it selected so I can move it let's move him back into position now it's not quite going to fit there either let's see if I can rotate him a bit more and get him into place There. Now, see so turn blue. That means the whole thing is on the plate now. So, if you look, have a look, the whole thing's on the plate. Now, if I was to try and slice it like this, it's going to have a whole bundle of supports going up all this height. And what that's going to do is one, use up a lot of resin to create the supports, and the supports will be weaker the longer they are. And there's a whole bundle of weight up the top here that they're going to have to hold. So the better thing to do is put the weight down the bottom. So you've got less supports uh, length. And it's going to make it a bit stronger and less chance to fail. So I'm going to go to my rotation tool. And just rotate it around so the heavy bit is on the bottom. You want to also have it on a fair bit of an angle. You don't want to have things like straight up. Um, not so bad with this one. But if it didn't have that back part of the head there so if you didn't have this part of the head and I was to place the model straight up like that 
a lot more chance of it breaking, of the supports breaking, because it's there, there's less for it to hold on to. So it's trying to hold on to this little spot here. So you want to give it a fair bit of substance to hold on to. So here we've got the whole head, so that's going to be easy. Now, also over on this side, you've got some directional boxes as well. So if I hit this box here, which is like the little house, it will rehome everything for me. And then you see I can, as I drag over, that's going blue. So if I go top, it will then give me the top view. And I can see how, this is how I line things up a bit better. So I can see it's red on this side, so that's the side that's out, so I can move it back here. Now, you can see the little white lines. So that's where the model sits. So I'm gonna try and center it a bit more because it's a bit close at the back end there. So I'll pull it down this way. So it's sort of centered there. That is my model, and uh, this, as you can see, there's going to be a lot shorter supports holding this part up, which is going to take the bulk of the weight of the model. And there's not so much worrying about these bits because they're not as, as heavy. So you want the ba the main base of the of the model supported well. Okay. So now what we need to do, if I was to leave it like this and slice it, what's going to happen is the whole thing is going to be solid resin. Not only are you going to use a lot of resin up by making it solid. Um, it's going to be really heavy. Okay, so what I want to do is hollow it out. It'd be like doing 100% infill in, um, in a filament. So we don't want to do that. What we're going to do is hollow this out. And up the top here, you've got a few little things. There's a hollow one here. There's the hole one here. There's the split. So you can split your models up with this as well. You've got a text tool. You've got a measuring tool. Um, and you've got a lay flat. So this basically you can click on a part of your model. So if I was to do this and then click on the back end here, it would basically put the bit I just clicked on as flat as it can to the, to the base. I'll just undo that. What we want to do now is hollow it out. So I'll select the model and just get the selection tool. And I'll go here, which is the hollow part tool and I'm going to hollow it now it defaults to 2 mil I take it down to 1.5 so um, I've set it to 1.5 and I've set it to suit so on common normally as a default I set it to exquisite or super fine we'll do super fine for this one basically it's making the hollow as level as it can so you get a nice even shell around that around the model so once you've done those two I'll pick what you want and I just go generate and this takes a little while and it will basically jet, hollow it out and make the model a lot lighter. Okay, so just at the end, it will then give you a demonstration of how it's going to hollow it, and it's all done. The model's hollow, which means as it prints, it will only set the outside of it and won't set any of the resin on the inside. Now, the problem with how it is now, there's no way for the resin to get out. So what you'll have is a hard shell mo model with so, um, liquid resin on the inside which is what this little hole tool for is up the top here, it is to put holes to let the liquid resin drain out of your model. If you do not do this, what's going to happen is when the temperature gets hot and it swells a little bit, all that resin swells, it will split your model open and you'll have liquid resin everywhere. So you've got to let get the resin out. So what I usually do is where they join, like this area here is where it joins onto another part of the model, I will make my little holes for the resin to come out so I usually make them three if I can three mil holes and I'll go inside here and I'll just pop one in there the other thing you got to make sure too sorry guys is the um, pierce one layer only turn that on it will only pierce through the one shell if you don't have it turned on it will pierce through as far as this says so it'll go through a 40 mil it will pierce through anything that was in 40 mil of where you started from so if you just want a hole just here and nowhere else, make sure that's ticked on. So I just chuck a few around here, make sure there's lots of areas for the resin to run out. Oh, I do want the other one. So the other places you can do them is I sometimes do, I pull it down to a one, make it small, and in between the fingers here, I usually put one on there. You just to give it somewhere to come out at the arms and I'm gonna do one under the armpit here 
right I'll probably do a two for that so I change the, the, the value of my holes depending on how, how much you're gonna see it and where you know, the place I'm gonna do it and whether it's gonna weaken the model or not so under the armpit no one's gonna see it under there now if you've got nowhere to do it and you want to put it on somewhere find a flat surface like here I'd be doing it here flat surface and pierce it in there because that is really easy to um, cover up later on if you want and post processing you can just put some um, bondo or stuff over it and just cover the hole up um, and I can put some holes in these little bits here because I know things join on there So I probably go a bit overkill, but I don't want my model splitting and just for the sake of putting a few little holes in it that are out of the way, um, it can save your model from splitting later on. Okay, so that's probably enough. Now what you want to do, now that you've done all your hollowing and you've put your holes in, what you've got to do is now go to the support um, tab up the top here. If you've got more than one model, model on your build plate, if you have one selected, it will only support, do the supports for the one you have selected. So if you want everything on the build plate to be done, so here I've only got one, but if I had four or five of these small and smaller on the build plate and I only have one selected, only pull the one across to, to do it. If you unselect everything like so, and just clicking on the build plate somewhere where there's not a model and then go support, it will take everything across into that support area and it will, um, it allow you to do them all at once. If you want to do individually, you have to go back and forth, selecting and then support, select to support. Okay, up on this part here, the only ones that really change are the column um, weight. So as you can see, you've got heavy, medium and light. Of course, the heavier it is, or the stronger it is, harder the support's going to get off. I've only needed to use medium. I haven't really had to go to heavy medium seems to do everything for me and if it's a small like fiddly little bit I will do light okay so I'll pick medium don't need to worry about changing any of these they all work fairly well and then I come down the bottom here and go support everything so go through so here you've got only things that are going to touch the platform and only things that are on the bottom you can do that if you want but I'm just going to go no nah, I want everything to be done and do it automatically for me and then we can go through and change it later so it's going to go calculate where the supports need to be and try and do it for us it's not always fantastic so sometimes you've got to edit it a little bit but at least doing it auto gives you some idea of where the supports need to be okay so as you can see it's put all the supports on for us and what you can do is you can just turn around have a look at everything when the base plate is on the bottom, it'll show you all the supports. If we flip it round, so it's no longer on the bottom, you'll see that it just gives you a little dot so you can see where everything is. All the red, all the pink parts, sorry, are parts where it's saying it needs support on. So as you can see, the head here doesn't have a lot of support up here. And down the ridges here, because they've got highs and lows is just shoved in uh, supports where every high and low is pretty much the way it does it i don't like the clumping that's done here so i'm going to go and edit it so all i'm doing is rolling the mouse button to um, increase and decrease the size of it and i'm going to hit the delete key over on the right hand side here and it gets me into delete mode and i can go and delete some of these um, supports which are too clumped together for me um, sometimes they get so clumped together they're like a solid bar and they're, they're really hard to get off so you just got to be careful of how many get put in all of these way too many supports in there so I'm just going to get rid of every second one I think now what you can do is you can just start off and just come straight into here and just go straight to add and not worry about doing the all command so you'll do everything manually um, but I just I, I don't know I just like them to put half of them in there for me so at least I've got some sort of rough idea of what the program thinks should be on there 
The only time I've had a problem with supports is when I haven't angled the model enough. All the rest, I've, I've, if I've done, haven't been trying to squeeze too much onto my build plate, I haven't had a problem with um, supports at all falling off or breaking or anything. So. Okay, so as I put the build plate down towards the bottom, it'll show me the supports again. I can sort of get a rough idea of how clumped together they are. Not too bad, but I don't like this head bit being unsupported like that. So we'll turn it over. We'll then come to the add key down the bottom here. And I'll add a few around the place. So I just add a couple around that pink bit that it reckons needs those supports. So basically I've unclumped them and now I'm going and spreading them out a bit more, which I find uh, works a lot better. So I don't have a set rule, I just have a look and just think, uh, where, where, where is some pink bits? where it doesn't have many supports and then I'll go and um, chuck some supports so now if we have a look and see that the head is supported all the way up the top here so it's okay okay so you can just spin around have a look where everything's supported so once you've got it all supported all you need to do is slice now occasionally you might get it saying um, the model is outside of the build plate. Do you want to proceed? If that happens, what you need to do is move the model again or delete a couple of supports. Um, and you have to do that in the prepare area. Okay, from here you can save or print. So if you've got the, um, the pro version, you can print straight to the printer. If you don't have the pro version, you have to save to a USB and take the USB to the printer and, and run it on the printer. Okay, so what I was talking about before by going into the prepare area, if you go into prepare, this is the only place you can move the model around, that's why. So, what you can do with the prepare is move it along the X axis. So you can move it, um, or X, Y axis, so you can move it this way. So basically, if your model goes like so, and a bit of the support is out, you can spin it only in the blue section so if you try and go your x y um oh no sorry your z so if i was to try and spin it along this axis it's going to tell me it's going to delete all the supports because it's going to have to recalculate all the supports when you're just spinning it um, flat it doesn't need to recalculate the supports you're just moving everything as one unit but if you try and uh, reorientate the angle of the model it's going to have to redo all the supports you can spin it like on the flat on the on the purple purple yeah, the purple one or you can just move it let's go and put it on the printer and see how it goes on the printer okay okay guys so we're at the um the print station at the moment so what i've got is two hallet so the hallet marge pro hallet marge i've got the cure station here I've got a secondary wash station here. I've got some silicon mats down over my area with, with um, rim on it. So then any spilling's not gonna go anywhere. I've got gloves on, I've double gloved. I've got two sets of gloves on, because um, they're not very, even though they're good, if they rip one, then you don't want this stuff on your hand. I'm also wearing a long sleeve shirt, so I don't splash any stuff on me. So we get the model out like so and you'll see the base that we made on the other one so this is a base this is the bottom part of the model that we showed you um, putting the um, supports on and as you can see it just comes off like that I just got a scraper underneath it and I scraped it off now I then wipe off any resin with a paper towel Chuck it in my little wash station there. And it'll, it'll, so this is um, an alcohol base. It's methylated spirits in this one. 
and it's isopropyl alcohol in the cure station, the wash cure station. So, I always top my um, vats up. I don't empty them, haven't emptied them yet. So basically if, if the print goes wrong, there's a clean option on the printer. So I can just go clean and it will basically um, light the whole pad up. So then it just produces a square bit of, um, of cured resin inside the vat. So then you just need to get a little, I've got a little plastic scraper. So I get this little plastic scraper that comes with it, so it's not going to damage it. And I just lift one end up and just peel the whole, I'll do one for you actually. So I haven't had it clean for a while. So go into tools, they've got a clean option. Uh, if you can see on there, clean option here. So push clean, go for 15 seconds, that's all you do. And basically it's going to do this for me. I'll get my bin out first. So that's the bin for everything to go in. So it's finished, it's curing now. So this is all I do to clean, yeah? I get this little bit here. And anything that might be loose on the print bed comes off in this little sheet here. Can you see it, that sheet? Pull it up a bit more. Okay. So I'm just letting the loose resin drip off. And then I can throw that whole thing in the bin. I'll get a paper towel. Just give my hands a bit of a rub so I'm not got covered in resin. That's it. That's how I clean my resin printer. That, you don't need to take it out. <coughs> now if I wasn't going to use it for a while, I'd probably empty it and clean it and, and store it away. But I use it nearly every day, so what's the point of cleaning it just to put resin back in it? Now I will say usually I'm wearing this mask. So it's a mask with filter on it like so, but you're not going to be able to hear me if I do that. So for this one I'm just going to do <coughs> it without a mask on. So I give my, take this off. I do clean the plate though, because the plate's what everything sticks to, yeah? So I've just got a clean paper towel, I'm just going to wipe off all that alcohol off the plate. And I don't throw that towel out because I'll use it later. I'll just give this one a bit of a clean. So that's all I use for cleaning, paper towels and some alcohol. So that's all ready to go for the next print now. That's all I've done. So if we angle it down a bit more. With taking off the, um, the support, it's this easy guys. And I'll just get it in a better position. Okay, so with the support, they come off like this. Some people get um, snips and do it. If it's really tight and it's really delicate, I'll get the snips and, and snip really close to the model so you're not left with any marks or anything like that on it. But as you can see, if you set it correctly, it comes off really, really easy. And this one, get all them off. No more supports. Now you, um, people, somebody's asked me, why do I use resin and FDM or filament? That's why. <laughs> because anything that's delicate and you've got um, supports to get off, the number of times I've broken the model or snapped a bit, I've had to re-glue on because they're so delicate and the, the supports are just so hard to get off. The other thing I do, I get a little toothbrush when I'm in my little resin bath here. I'll angle that down a bit more. So I'm in my resin bath and I just give it a bit of a scrub all over. The old toothbrush. And basically this gets off any um, loose resin so the details stay on your model and it doesn't get stuck in any detail. 
A lot of people don't do this. I just, you know, it's only five seconds, five seconds, so it doesn't take long. Just to give it a bit of a scrub. But this is the reason I wear a long shirt as well, because I don't want any of this splashing on me. It's not the alcohol that's the problem, it's the resin mixed with the alcohol that's the problem. Okay. So what's going to happen is I've got a, a quite a dirty resin bath here that main this is going to use I'm going to use to put all the straight out of the um, resin vat into. So most of the resin crap goes in there. So by the time, and you can see if I dip it in here, then pull it out again, you can see how it's all coming out of the holes there that we that we put in before to let all the um, resin drain out. So that all drained out inside the inside the um, the vat there, so it's part of the vat. Let's get a few little straggler bits of support just stuck in there. Okay, now I'll just put it in my cure station. So this is the wash cure station you can buy from Creality. And this one here, all it is, is a little plastic tub I got from the hardware store. And I got one of these little trays with it that fit inside it. It's not, they're not sold together. I think they were about two or three dollars each, Australian dollars, so even cheaper in American. Um, and then I chuck the tops on. Okay, so once you've um, done that, you can get your gloves off. <clears throat> now I just do the clean up with the other pair of gloves I've got on. And I'm using the old towels that I um, <clears throat> used earlier to wipe the um, build plate with to wipe off the resin off stuff. That's my process. Now I just turn this on, put the top on it and tell it to do a wash at normal. So basically I do a wash, I do it normal speed, I do it for 10 minutes and away it goes. So that's it. There's not much to it. And that's the mess. That's the mess everyone talks about. I th that's the whole reason I didn't um, take up resin printing to start with. Because I thought you had to empty that out, clean it out, do all this sort of stuff, mess everywhere. It is a little bit sort of messy, but not. Compared to the amount of dust and stuff you get from sanding, this is not as messy as sanding and trying to get um, models smooth because they're already smooth when they come out the resin bat. So I don't have to hardly touch that with sand. I, I might give it a little bit of a sand, but on a whole, don't touch it with sanding. There are no layer lines. So that's it. Okay, so it's finished with its wash. So now I'm going to put my gloves back on. I'm not wearing the long sleeve shirt this time because I'm not going to be splashing, hopefully, um, alcohol and stuff around. So, get a paper towel. Okay, so lift it out, just let the um, alcohol drain out. Put it down with the drain holes down so it leaks out any alcohol while it's doing it. And then get the little plate it fits on. See, this is the UV lamp here. And they've got a magnetic turntable that turns around here. So... Uh, just um, getting off any alcohol and what may be left of a little bit of resin that might be stuck in with the alcohol. So you can see the holes in there. So that's where I've drilled them and I've put them and I put holes on the each of the feet. So then everything drains out and it's got nothing inside it and it's really light. From here now. The problem's going to be 
it's going to spin around, it's going to hit. So what I do have, is I just use a roll of tape, and I stick it up in there, and I can see now that as it turns, it's not going to hit the UV light. Cool, so I'll put that on for 10 minutes, um, and then when that's finished, I'll put it on for another 10 minutes, but I'll turn it up the other way so the bit that's inside the tape gets hit as well. And away it goes, and it's just going to set the resin now. So that's basically resin printing. That's it. That's all I do. Then I just glue the models together. So. Okay guys, so that's, that's resin printing. It's not overly difficult. I find it actually easier, um, mainly because of the um, the quality of the model that comes out of the resin printing, the lack of layer lines and the fact that the post-processing, I'm a bit lazy so I don't like doing that, but a uh, lot less post-processing with the um, resin models. Uh, the only problem is the beds aren't as big, so you, you're limited to um, either slicing your model up a lot more or just not printing that sort of model. Um, or reducing down in size. But saying that, let's have a look at how my model came out. It is part of a, if you didn't notice it, it was an alien um, figure that we were preparing. So I have a diorama that I've done and I'll just turn this around. Okay, so this is the diorama. So as you can see, there's Ripley there in the uh, exoskeleton fighting the mother alien, and this is the one we printed. So you can see how big these are, yeah? So my, it's my hand. <laughs> and um, the model's huge. <laughs> but um, this is a model that we printed, and there's a bottom part of it that we bought out of the vat, uh, out of the, um, sorry, out of the um, printer. But this is the top part that we, we um, did the slicing on and you can see how well in detail I've done nothing to it except glue it all together so you see the details of it yeah and then um, this part down the bottom here some's done in resin um, most of it's done in FDM so filament so just the base but everything else up the top is all done in resin you even got the old um, robot guy I can't remember his name Anyway, that is the diorama that I've done, and it came out pretty well. Okay. Oh, one, two, okay, I'm in, in my son's bedroom because everything I'm running out of space. So um, he's staying with his girlfriend at the moment. So I've pinched his bed, put my diorama on. I think you're going to be in trouble. Anyway, guys, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Um, and you can see how well the models came out, yeah? So if you haven't done resin printing, uh, maybe it's time to give it a try. I held off for ages and ages because I thought it was too messy and too much trouble. But like I said before, the sanding is more effort than the cleaning up the resin. So you just need to take precautions. Make sure you've got a face mask. Make sure you wear gloves. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Um, I vent the... Um, the hose straight out my garage so I've got the printers in the garage and the venting hoses go out under the door and out into the open space so it um, dissipates quite quickly outside there um, and that's it okay so um, hopefully have one out for you next week have a lovely day and I will see you then okay bye okay guys thanks for watching I really do appreciate the support you might like one of these or one of these <laughs> videos um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. <laughs> okay, thanks guys, bye.